What's going on everybody and welcome to episode 18 of Wrecked by Creebold. My god, I have been wanting to say that in the beginning of a video for so long. First off, I'm sorry that this video took so long to get out, but you know, stuff happens with builds, whatever. So guys, if this is the first episode of Wrecked by Creebold that you've ever seen, you probably need to go back and start episode 1. Doesn't really make sense to start off at episode 18. But regardless, if you're new here, Wrecked by Creebold is my Patreon funded YouTube motorcycle build series where thanks to the people that support this series over on Patreon, I'm able to take a wrecked motorcycle, build it back up to make it street legal, then customize the hell out of it, and then when the series is all over, we actually give the motorcycle away back to the fans. The fans are the ones that fund it and make the thing happen. The fans are the ones that get the motorcycle at the end of the day. So if you're interested in more info on that, top link in the description will take you over to the Patreon page and you can check out all about the community and whatnot. Today, Brian's not even here. Brian is not even in town. So if you guys know, Brian's the mechanic that helps out. He's a regular mechanic. He has to go get certification and training and stuff like that. He's up in like Wisconsin or something like that, getting like ATV training. So I figured while he's gone doing that, I'm gonna do some of the tiny things that I can do to get us better ready for when he gets back. So today, the rims are finally done powder coating. It is exciting. Also, I don't think I've told you guys what the rims colors are and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna get to see that today. Also, what we're doing today, the rims are powder coated, but I've got to also take those rims to Mountain Motorsports to get the wheels mounted on them. And that way, when Brian gets back, we're going to be able to put this whole thing together. By the end of this episode, this bike is going to look a lot different. You guys look at it. Look at it now. Because it ain't going to look like this by the time this video ends. So without further ado, guys, we are going to run to the powder coating place and check out these rims. I am so excited. I haven't got to see them in person yet. Let's go check them out. Also, I've got to grab a couple of these other things down here. Uh, so guys, we're at the powder coating place, but the weather sucks ass, which is the whole reason I wore this jacket. I'm gonna go in and grab these wheels. I'm not gonna grab the camera, but I'll show you them back there. Okay. Um, guys? <laughs> Holy freaking Y'all, these tires are ridiculous. What's going on everybody? So, it is the day before we start filming episode 18. Brian, I think, got back in town today, so he's gonna be here tomorrow, and that's when we're gonna film part one. But before he gets here, uh, a company emailed me about something I needed in the garage, and I was like, you just wanna send that over? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. So, I wanna show you guys this thing and my whole plan, because I think we're gonna surprise Brian. It should be awesome. Let me show you the box. So, this package showed up a couple days ago. from a company called New Air, and this is a beverage cooler, AKA mini fridge. So the guys over at New Air saw my videos and they were like, hey, you know what you need in your garage? A mini fridge, and I'm like, you're right, because I have seen that a ton of places in the comments. They're like, dude, it's not a garage until you got a mini fridge. Also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, Brian freaking drinks Rockstar Energy drinks. He always brings two of them with him. So my idea was get these guys to send me a mini fridge, stock it with Rockstar, so that way when Brian gets back, he's gonna be like, what? I think it's gonna be awesome. But first, let's open this thing real quick. It's a little bigger than I expected. 
I've never had a mini fridge before. I kind of thought they were tinier. Ha! <laughs> it even has a light! What? So, like I said, uh, Brian drinks rock stars, and I know he likes fruit punch. So this one's fruit punch, and this one's called punched. So hopefully between one of these flavors, they'll be the right one. So fridge is uh, semi-stocked. We're gonna have to get way better stock in this. I don't even know what kind of liquids do you keep in a garage? Like what kind of manly things am I supposed to be drinking? I don't know. Anyway, uh, New Air, thanks for sending out the mini fridge. The garage is now a much better place because of you. So like I said, New Air did not pay me to do this. They just sent the fridge out and who's gonna turn down a free mini fridge, right? So if you guys wanna check out the fridge for yourself, you can check out the link in the description. Now I gotta figure out where to put this thing. It's actually not a bad spot. Brian, what's up? What's up? Come here. And let me show you the awesomeness that is something. Oh, you haven't seen the rims yet either. No, I haven't. Okay, before you before we talk about the rims, okay. look behind you. Look over there. Nice, look at you! And look what it's filled with. I see what it's filled with. Okay, so here's the thing. You told me you like fruit punch. By the way, try three stores. Nobody had pina colada. So I gave up. <laughs> but the pina colada is hard to find. It's that one. Okay. Do you like the zero one? It's okay. That thing is gonna eventually be stocked filled. So I'm gonna have to stop on my way here to pick them up. Not anymore. Perks of the job. <laughs> we are finally ready to get building on episode 18. Uh, this is gonna be part one, but one video for you guys. So. First things first, we have a lot of stuff to get going on, so I'm gonna try my best to talk as little as possible. We both know that. Good luck. I'm, yeah, I'm not really good at that, but I'm gonna try. So, uh, first things first, what did we get powder coated? So, on the powder coating list, obviously the- uh, Wheels. Wheels, but no, rims, that's what I meant. Obviously, rims got powder coated because they are freaking bright as the sun. This is, this is a hub, right? That's the correct? It's a carrier. Carrier. Carrier is uh, powder coated. We got the uh, block off plates for the mirrors and we got the this little plate This little black plate is the adjuster for the suspension. It was like this kind of matte silver metal color Now we got it black so it just fits in more. Oh and the forks So with the forks there were this like Kawasaki green color on the forks uh, and the shop actually was able to color these extremely close to what the fairings are gonna look like. Unfortunately for you guys in this video, you're not gonna get to see the fairings. Sad times, right, Brian? The fairings will be revealed in the next episode, which will be the reveal video. So if you're looking forward to that, tough shit. First thing up today, getting the forks installed. Lego, Brian, you ready to install forks? Ready. Wait, is that, that's the first thing, right? If you wanna do it that way. Personally, I would assemble the wheels first. Then it sounds like we're assembling the wheels first, because you're the professional. Or, or we could just put the forks on first, doesn't really matter. So guys, on the forks, what we got uh, powder painted. Forks are painted, everything else is powder coated. This little bit right here, this little bit, that little guy. All of those, all of those are green, right? Every they're, single one of those. Green, yeah. yeah. So now you can see that they're all this like kind of grayish situation. Tell, I don't know if you'll be able to see the like little shimmery, what are you calling it earlier? Pearlescence? Pearlescence. Pearlescence. I think you said seven millimeters at the very, like right under the bolded area. Is that what you're talking about? All right, so seven mil, right? Seven mil. Seven mil. Four goes in that way. Uh, can you pull that caliper out of the way? Cause I don't want to scratch anything. I can with my delicate hands. Try very hard not to scratch anything. Boom. 
Do you want me to hold the fork? I'm just gonna give this a little snug so it doesn't drop. Gotcha. Like that. Just hold on to that. Don't let it drop. Don't push it up. All the pressure. Oh God! I didn't expect the weight. Then stop. Come back up just a t too far. Now the other side. Oh, sure. And then we'll go back through and torque everything. Chase, you got it. Yep. I'm ready for the weight. Coming down. Stop. Come back up just a hair. You like how I did that? And fa. So as far as these being straight down here, like how do we play that game? What's that? These guys. You mean like this? All right, guys. That's all for me. <laughs> yeah. Am I? Okay. I'm a. All right. I'm a. I'm didn't, a make pretty sink, things. Didn't sink in, huh? Some bolts that go this way. Yep. Through the uh, the handlebar, we need to find those. Oh God, what do they look like? They should be up here somewhere. Look at this they table. look just like that. Okay, that's what we're looking for now. We got them both. Oh, here, you already found. Oh, okay. Well, Brian's already like five steps ahead of me. <laughs> For this case, the lower triple tree has two bolts in it. Yep. If you've ever tried to torque these and you put a torque wrench on it, you torque this one, then you torque this one, you go back to this one, this one's loose. Okay. And you torque this one, you go back to this one, this one's loose, and you can go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and they'll, you'll keep being able to tighten them. Interesting. Because the way it's, it's kind of like walking itself closed. Yeah. So the proper way to torque a setup like this, some, these triples have two bolts. This upper one only has one, so you only have to torque that one. Yep. Some triples have three. Okay. Um, so the way you want to do it is you want to torque. You choose, you torque one, then you torque the other, and then you go back to the first one and leave it. Gotcha. You just stop messing with it. Stop messing with it. Cause you can continually tighten this thing until you actually break something. Uh, you'll either break a bolt yeah. Or you'll literally dent the fork tube. Sounds like something I would do. Feel good about that, Brian? No. Well, nothing's torqued, but they're on. None of the bolts for the fork legs are torqued because I have three torque wrenches and somehow there's this middle block of area of torque spec that I have no torque wrench for. So we have another day that we're going to have to film with this. So I'm going to go ahead and order that torque wrench. And then on the next episode, I've got it noted that we'll go back through and tighten all those down. Other than that, everything is fine. Other than not having what we need, we're fine. <laughs> so let's build the wheels. Yes. And then I'll find the fender because it's somewhere. And then we'll search through the fender hardware, find that, and then we'll get those installed. Okay. You're going to need to, let's see how hard this stuff comes out of here. Oh, so I can use this opportunity while Brian is uh, etching away uh, powder coat to tell you guys the wheels we went with are Michelin Power RX. Tires, damn it. They're tires. Tires are made out of rubber. What did I say? Wheels? wheels. Tires. The tires that we've got to put on our wheels. Yeah, there you go. Michelin Power RSs. You can do your own research and find out more about them, but that's what this bike got. Got any opinions on Michelin Power RSs, Brian? I haven't ridden them yet, but I am a Michelin fan. They even got a little Michelin man on them. Yep. Oh my God, that's cute. The tires are almost inspiring. Look at that little guy. Isn't he not the cutest little guy? What the hell? All right, this is going to take too long to do it like this. We're going to have to go with the Dremel. Uh-oh. Oh, it doesn't work. How shitty. But we do have the other... Uh, yeah, we got the plug-in one. I was going to say, we also have the other cordless to drill. You want to do the honors? <laughs> yes, I do. I figured as much. 
RIP. Dum bum. Okay. Back to work. <laughs> Safety first, Brian, come on. Almost too late for that. Now we have to beat on some shit. Okay, now you do have bearing installer, right? Is that what that thing is? So we're looking for a bearing installer tool, but I don't think I have one. So, big so enough what sockets. we're looking for is you could uh, you can use a socket in its place, but you can't just take any socket and start smashing on this bearing. No. Okay. So uh, you don't want to touch anything inside of this blue seal. If you're going to install this bearing, it needs to touch this outside race. That's the only thing that you're allowed to hit. Okay. If you put any side load on the actual bearing assembly itself, you can ruin it very, very quickly. What we're looking for, as you can tell on this one, that socket's not quite big enough. Damn, a 36 is not big enough? Nope. Shit. So is that the biggest one I have? I think it might be. What if you had something flat? I don't know if you noticed, but the bearing goes down here. So oh. the inside. Gotcha, so you would have this, to go Because in. there's a snap ring that goes in here, too. Should we cheat? We can cheat? I can cheat. I know how to cheat. I don't know if you know how to cheat. I don't know if I want to show people how to cheat. But you know what? We got shit to do, so I'm going to cheat. Oh, man. Is this like a super inside? Not really. Inside really thing? just like the not, not the best way to do things. Oh, in that case. Oh, what, Brian? The camera didn't happen to record when you were doing your secret to get the bearing in. Ugh. She's in to depth. We have our groove for the snap ring is exposed. So now we can, uh, bearings in, spins nice and smooth. Now we can get our snap ring in and our seal in and continue. Uh, this is a, a seal. This seals against the inside diameter of the carrier uh -huh. and then the spacer for the rear axle fits in the center of this and it seals against the spacer. Right. So it seals against this. Oh, I see. Right, so the seal touches against here all the way around. Right, and then it goes on the inside of here and touches in here all the way around and it kind of helps keep any road debris, water, rain. Mm -hmm. If you're riding in bad conditions, you're road salt or road, you know, sand or just any grime from getting to this bearing. Gotcha. Now the bearing already has a seal on it itself. That's what the blue part is, is a, a seal in the bearing. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what the blue part is, but a little added protection. Spacer goes in and that's your assembly. Brian has been waiting for this grease moment since the first episode that he helped me out. So badly, I wanted to give you that little it's, tiny grease up top there. It's like so brand new that the lid is stuck to the grease inside. Which one do you want to use, Brian? This one or this one? Oh God, it went into the unknown. <laughs> it's never gonna be found again. Now we'll never have a question as no. which grease we're using. Yep. So this is really just to aid in the ease of installation. Just a tiny bit of grease along the outside edge of this seal to help it slide in place. And when I put these in, I always like to give them just a little bit of a twist okay. to make sure that that lip isn't pressed like, in. Yeah. Oh, snap, rap music video! Okay, so the carrier is assembled. Carrier assembled! Beginning of assembly confirmed. Now you already got all the power code out of that, right? This thing, yep. we're probably gonna have to do the... the... The Dremel? Yeah, the Dremel method. And there's only one seal because the inside one doesn't get one. Gotcha. Poor inside seal. Nobody gave a shit about it. Doesn't matter. But you're probably not gonna wanna hold it like that while I hit it with a hammer. So you could probably put it on the floor. Noted. So I just... Boop! Lay it in there so it's nice and flat. Nice and flat confirmed. Sort of confirmed. Sort of confirmed. Okay, here's your... God, this is... Should we 
Dremel the stuff out in the middle. It's in there relatively flat. This guy goes on top. Now we bang it in. Right, now you can see how it's not really flat. Ish, so I start on the high side. Yes. Got and it. Just Tap it real lightly, you don't have to go crazy, until you see that it's nice and flat and everything seems to be going in. Just like a delicate flower, right? Yeah. Now let's see where we're... Does it still look high side? A little bit, yeah. Where is it? High right here? Yeah, it looks like it to me. Gotcha. I trust your eyes over mine. Now let's see, does it look flat to you? Looks like the side is high. I'm gonna do this real quick, just to get you. So much for being delicate. See, if you want to look at it, it looks pretty flat now. Yeah. All right. So now I just do my workaround thing, or just so, go from the middle. So you see how this socket actually touches the edge all the way around? Gotcha. So you just want to center this off. You may want to put your fingers down here so you feel that it's centered. Yep. And hit the boom. God almighty. Feel like it's going? Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, it's 100% going. Also feels terrifying. You know what? Since we're right here, and things are so close to stuff, I'm gonna let the pro do it, because the last thing I want to do... I just don't want to f*** this shit up at this point, Brian. But, like... Grow, grow a pair. Finish it off. You started God. to finish it. Damn it, Brian. You're learning here. You can't no. learn by doing it halfway. You gotta finish. Blaming you fers for this shit. Well, if I'm up, I'll fix it. I feel like like this is the thing where all the YouTube comments are like, Chase needs to do more work, blah blah blah. So now it's me like crying just doing work <laughs> and you're like, I'm not helping you. You must finish. Alright, so if you take a look, this side looks a little low, right? Compared to this side? Yeah. So you need to make sure that you work that side now. Gotcha. So closer to me? Nope. Wait. Further away from you. Oh, okay. Keep going. Yep. Oh, when you get to the bottom, you'll know it. Oh, really? That sounds like the bottom. Okay. Do you hear the pitch change? Yeah, yeah, really. Like, it went, from, went from hollow to solid. So now, what would be next? I mean, just the other side, right? If you put the next bearing in, mm -hmm. right? How do you get the spacer in? Okay, we have a spacer. Put it in. I just... Bloop. Done. Okay. And now... The other bearing. Oh wait, we're gonna have to drum with this shit too now. Is it bearing now or is it one of these little guys? It's bearing. Interesting. All right. Those go in on the very ends of the wheel before it goes in to the swinger. All right. What? Crooked AF. All right, so when you have it like this, you can just kind of... All right, so now I'm going to show you how fast you can put this thing in instead of hitting Ha <laughs> ha! Professionalism. A hundred times. All right, so get it. As you guys can see, there's obviously no difference between Brian doing something and me doing it. Okay. We're in. I like how just casual it goes from... Alright. Now the seal goes in. Just a little bit of grease to help us put the seal in a little easier. So you kind of just open the tip first. So you're spraying bike polish on the little rubber things. It's a lubricant that dries. Oh, okay, I gotcha. That shit looks bad. Dude. 
just putting the carrier in there finishes that off nice. Yeah. So now we need sprocket, brake rotor, right? And then we can put the wheel in. Perfect segue, because I need to change cards. Yay, card This brake was brought to you by New Air, who made it so I can have a water without having to walk my fat ass upstairs. Thanks. Maybe you should put that in the other room then. Oh! Brian, man, I'm just gonna go in the corner and drink my water. I thought that was a great integration, Brian. It was. I had to piss on your parade. <laughs> I get it, because when you drink water, you have... Okay. So we're cleaning out the old nuts to put them back in. What is this? A bolt. God. Sorry, Brian. I failed you. I'm leave. I'm leave. All right, bye, Brian. <laughs> One of these days you'll get it, Chase. What do you think? I'm thinking season four, maybe. If you don't know, by the end of this season, we're gonna have to just tie you down and hold your eyelids open with like clamps <laughs> and stick you in front of a screen with, you know, some horrible music playing until you learn. That sounds like it from a terrifying movie or have something Have you not like seen that? that terrifying movie that I'm describing? You need to get the Chain and Sprockets kit so we can get the rear sprocket. You do it. And then you're going to install the rear sprocket and nuts and torque them down. And then you're going to install the rear brake rotor, buy some fresh Loctite on the bolts and torque them down. I feel relatively confident to do most of the things you're saying. Practice makes perfect, buddy. You're right. You're right. That's why I want wreck bike rebuild all day, every day. Hashtag learning, hashtag getting better. I'm excited for the time when you can throw boxes around and say, not my shop. When will I get to do that? When we, have a, when we have a big enough crew to clean the shop and have camera people and somebody to oh run and get you coffee. God, and yes. I want to hire all those people right now so I can just be like, hey, freaking assistant, grab me my rear sprocket. Yeah. I don't think it'll last very long if that's going to be the case. No, it's no, not. Probably. But dude, oh my God. Good contrast. Can I have those nuts, please? Good for you, Chase. God, You're dang it, I nailed it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Actually, before you stick that on, we have a uh, small piece of sandpaper somewhere. We're just gonna clean up that rotor real quick. Before you put it back on, it's a brand new wheel. And... So we're not trying to resurface the rudder or anything, but we want to clean it up. It kind of looks not so great. Can't really tell in this camera so much, but I'm sure in this one you'll be able to tell that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a little grimy, so we're just going to real quick. On. Oh, that's a little ABS. Um, Wheel speed pickup ring. Should I tap them here? Right, right at the very edge where it's going to go past the powder on the wheel. And I should, this side should touch the metal, the right? The part that you're going to straight up and down. Just very, see what it does. That's it. And make sure all those bolt holes are lined up because once yeah. you get that thing on there, it ain't going to turn. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, so there's uh, added pressure. This thing ain't going nowhere. I'm assuming we're going to uh, put the front sprocket on and route the chain. Well, you can't do that without the wheel on it. But what do we have to do before we put the wheel on it? Oh, we gotta do the shock thing. Right, so right. I'm looking at this and we kind of really can't do the shock yet. Why? because we have the bike strapped from here to there and if we undo the rear of this it's got nothing to oh true so we need to do the front wheel and put the front wheel on okay and then we can take these straps off and it'll be leaned on the front wheel that's a, yeah that's a really good point jack. yeah i didn't think about any of that okay fair enough front wheel then man this gets it right off holy yeah. shit Flat, right? I think it's flat. 
I'm looking at you to make sure it is flat before I start. If you're doing something real bad, I'll let you know. Okay, got it. In that case. There. I can't watch you be timid anymore. Yeah, you can you can hear it like it's so, it gets solid. That whole time I thought I was really like making headway. No. Well, you were it was slow, but. <laughs> I mean, I guess I would rather learn slow than, than f it up. Exactly. Yeah. It's always better to take your time and get it done than it is to just wreck shit. Now you know which way this wheel spins? I would look at the tire and find that out. But did they put the tire on the right direction? Oh shit. That's a damn arrow. Did you know that was on there? No. 90% of your wheels will have a directional arrow. Whether, whether it's here, sometimes it'll be on the hub in here, uh, sometimes it'll be over here on the spoke, but 90% of the time there'll be some sort of directional arrow on your wheel. So you can double check it with your tire. So now, do you know why I asked you which way? Because it's going to depend on what spacer things go on what side? Spacers are the same. Good good guess though. Damn it. That was a good guess. Alright. What what other reason why would you need to know? I don't like this whole you, you are taking a full advantage of being a teacher right now. I want you to learn. Okay. So if they're watching and they're watching and everybody's watching and they're listening to this, they're learning as well. So I'm the student in the front of the class. You are. <laughs> it can't be the rotors because the rotors are the same on both sides, right? What else is attached ABS? to that? Now, which side is the ABS on? Is there ABS only on one side? Well, is there? What do you think? How many ABS pickups do you see hanging off the front of this bike? Well, I mean, there's a lot of shit hanging off the front, but I mean, I know we took one off. Will it focus now? There you go. ABS pickup. Okay, ABS is on the left side. So, the left side is the one to get the ABS little ring. Exactly. All right. That's, That's for you. Fucking big. Oh, left. We already we already thought about this day, bro. You already. That was you. That's your handwriting. Oh, that is mine, isn't it? So guys, while I was putting the front rotors on, Brian was finding the front fender, which is carbon. Look at that. Uh, we have an issue, a rather, rather big issue. So, Brian was putting the front fender on, and uh, the front fender has two bolts on each side. The top bolts fit fine, and the bottom ones aren't even close to fitting. Check it out. You guys can... That mounting tab, bolt hole. Yeah, it's like... Like, you guys can see the height difference. And that's not like a, like... The oh, it's just a little off now. That's yeah, like, it, it's not fixable because like it's, for one, like this has this little indented area. So it's not like we could drill a hole. If this was flat, 
I think I might bring that up. I mean, like, how do you feel about drilling a hole through? It's no, not even close enough that's to not, do that. It's not an option. Not only that, but I'm not sure if you could tell, but it hits the fork leg before it actually comes out and lines up. Oh, Brian, you know what we could do? We could get some really dope black zip ties in here to hold it in to make sure it don't go nowhere. Perfect. No. Hmm. But we could still put the wheel on. We need to progress. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna this progress. Is, uh, this is a after the episode type situation. Yeah. Hey, the carbon looks cool. So it does look good. And once you stick that highlighter wheel in there behind the carbon, it's gonna look even better. Ugh. We're gonna focus on positive and I'll uh, deal with that after the episode. <laughs> okay, a little more sketchy shit here. Oh, yay. Glad you didn't say what you were doing. Holy shit. Did we get a new front axle too or just the rear? I believe we just got the new rear axle. So then the front one that we have, we need to clean up a little bit. Yep. I think I may have already done. pliers on a pair of ice grips or something. That's terrifying. Come on. Quit being such a weenie. I'm, I'm being a weenie trying to keep your fingers on your hand, bro. So our axle nut thing is getting in the way of itself. Yeah. So, Bri so Brian, yeah, Brian wants to cut it. We don't have a choice. We have to, okay. Today is getting even better, yay. I promise you. In season three, I will get a table vise. I promise. You gotta have a table to put a table vise on. Hiya! Old, old faithful right here. Oh, sweet God, Brian. Oh, my, okay. I do not yeah, approve. I I'm just checking. Okay. I didn't even pull the safety on it yet. Relax, okay. man. I'm looking, I'm looking for longevity here. I'm a prof professional finger knot cutter offer. Your resume of having 10 fingers does prove that you seem to be relatively decent at that. Oh Christ, okay. I light myself on fire yet? No, no, you're it's good for now. Definitely not gonna touch that. Da, da, da. So you guys, this is why he had to do that. It's like stepped. Like this side, and it was hitting in there, and we needed to be, so we get a good bite on it, so we could actually torque it. That's the point where you can I don't trust. Step on it if your shoe mounts to it, then it's too high. No. <laughs> There we go. Actually, let's bring this jack up until it touches the motor. Okay, now we can take the rear stand out. Got it. Straps aren't doing anything now anyway. But yeah, but if the bike started tipping one way, right? They're kind of like a... The front wheel chalk is in. We so we could take off the straps and the yeah. stand. Let's move the straps to the front. It's making me nervous. Okay, now you may proceed with whatever sketchy maneuver you were going with. Okay. So guys, after assessing the whole situation, we're gonna remove the connection between the rear shock and the swing arm. And then we're gonna try to assemble it in a different spot because we can go on both sides if we move the where the cable goes. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So 
So guys, these are little block off plates because we're not having passenger pegs. So what these guys do is they just go right here on the uh, subframe. So guys, that's what my side looks like. But remember, I don't have any extra bracketing. Brian's having to do what I did over there, plus the tiny bracket that fits the Olens onto it. So, slightly more complicated on that side. That looks like a rubber little washer. Well, you remember what this was for? Rear seat? No. What was that? This goes here underneath that to hold all the cabling down. Oh, so the new one's already in there? Well, we have another one right here. Right here is the new one. Gotcha. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off. Okay. And I'm going to put it behind here as a spacer for that for side. For that. Got it. Now, I might need to cut off both of them. Yeah. Because I don't know if one is going to be thick enough. Yeah. So you see how much thinner it is? I may need both sides. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually going to need to cut this thing off with our magic cutoff wheel. Oh, sweet God. Come on, that wasn't that bad. Yeah, to be fair, you've got it wedged in there pretty well. Like, I'll give you credit for that. That's it. Wasn't Easy too enough. Bad, was it? That wasn't too bad. I'll give you credit for that. I'm just taking note of how close your thumb fingernail is to the. I'm not. What are you laughing at? You know what I'm laughing at. I do. Did you yank your hand away to make me think like your finger was cut? No, that was close. Okay. <laughs> that was a yank away of fear. All the digits are intact. Keep bragging. There's no blood. Keep bragging. I didn't grind any fingernails down or anything. You got Just close. Covered one in time. plastic. Oh, and now you can loosen that. Loosen this bolt, pull it down, put the other bolts in, and slide them up. about that time for that rear wheel. It sure is. So guys, before we put the rear wheel on, we have rear wheel adjusters that we're gonna install because that makes sense. Bolt in, but the nut's not. Good call. Was it on there, just not torqued down? No, or? it wasn't on there at all. It just spun down. Gotcha. This 
This is a castle nut, right? Right, so you're supposed to be able to screw in far enough to put a cotter pin through there and through the holes. Yeah. That might do it without the washer, but it kind of kind of should have the washer in there. So what's more important, the cotter pin or a washer? Cotter pin. But you could wreck your nice little adjusters without the washer in there because the back of the nut will cut into it. Do we have a thinner washer? I mean, this is the deal. Uh, we're going to have one that's going to be this big that's going to fit on there. Right. We'll deal with this for now. We'll get the chain on and we'll see what happens. All right, guys. So we got the tires on, wheels, everything. Next up, we have the front sprocket and we have the chain. Look at her span. Look at her span. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Pounds. What are my tips, Brian? What did you give me? Go down or you want, you want to keep because the torque is so high, you want to keep the torque wrench in your power point. Okay. Where you make more power in your body. So you want to have it out in front of you so you can push real hard or down below you so you can push real hard. I'm so you, don't want to, you don't want to do one of these with it because yeah. it's just it's real difficult to do. And you're probably gonna to want to hit yourself in the face. It's up for some reason it slips off, yeah. You're gonna hit yourself in the face. All right, I am going to go down because okay. I feel like I'm stronger that way. There it is. That's not that bad. Okay. You're probably going to have to go just a little bit tighter to get the cotter pin to line up, but you're going to want to use just a regular breaker bar or something like that to go a little bit better. Oh, okay. So we're going just enough to see the cotter pin. Let me see where we're at. That should do it right there. Cool. Cross what off? Chains, sprockets. Chains, sprockets. Uh, exhaust. Oh, I get to tell everybody what exhaust we got. Ooh -wee. So, as you can tell, we got a chain on, got sprockets on, got wheels on. Now, we get to the fun part of what exhaust did we choose for this bike. Brian, can I get your hand for a reveal, please? Absolutely. Drum roll. This is what you want to see? Yep. Are you sure this is it? Yep. You positive? Uh huh. Okay. Hundo P. Dun 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 dun. Sevagrg. Graves! Woohoo! So while Brian gets into that box, uh, we went with the Graves exhaust for multiple reasons. I wanted a low exhaust. I didn't want the high exhaust because I wanted the tail section to be clean on this bike. It had a good sound. It had a carbon fiber look thing to it. It's not and, look, it's carbon. I mean, it, yeah, it's carbon. And the sound of it wasn't the best sounding exhaust for this bike, but for the low mounted full system exhaust, the Graves ended up being what I personally thought was the best option. It's also a full system. This is not a slip on. Let's get this thing installed. All right, dude, so 
exhaust is getting on. We've got to remove the fender so we can, we're going to pivot the radiator forward. Let's so rest we, against the tire so we don't want to rub it on the fender. Yep, of course, because we don't want to mess up our up fender. You ready? Uh, sure. So now pull your side of the radiator forward just a little bit and push it towards me. Oh, never mind. Good. It's towards you. Oh, it does come towards me. There it is. Right. And just let it hang. Okay. We did because I remember the <laughs> I remember the shot I got of you installing those. Okay, so let's uh, work this. In. Seems like it's really fing close. It needs to go in a little bit deeper. I'd like to like tap it, but there's no room to tap it. Yeah. It's getting caught up on that top right. There it is. Oh, there you go. Nice. Sometimes you just have to be a gorilla. <laughs> now what is this supposed to attach to? It goes to this. And that little piece goes where? Right behind the foot hook. So we're gonna have to take that one off too. Uh huh. Here you are, sir. That's all my good. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. You shouldn't be breaking shit loose with a T-handle anyway. I, I'm digging this little... That's so you can push and pull at the same time and like... Push at the top. Knock out, blam! You know what yeah. I mean? So you can yeah. kind of control both directions at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like the strategy. Saving Loctite, <laughs> just like like a biscuit with gravy, <laughs> sopping it up, sopping it all up, yeah. No DB killer in it, huh? Ooh, fancy. This thing did not come with a spring puller. Was, was spring puller. The hell are all those? These are what attach up here. Oh. All the loops that go from the head pipe. Where do they hook into? Uh, there's like a, on the clamps that bolt to the cylinder head. Uh-huh. There are the little, little holes. holes. Yeah. Spring goes in one side there and then hooks onto the head pipe on the other side. Oh shit. Are you able to do that by hand? I don't know. <laughs> One way to find out though. Yep, you are correct. Actually, before we put these springs on, we should probably torque these. Good idea, right? Yep. Okay, update. Uh, 
before we were going to try to get all these springs on, we were going to torque all of the headers down and found out that the headers also exist in that small little torque range that I don't have a torque wrench for. So the torque wrench that I'm getting for the forks is the same one we will be using for the headers. And because of that, we can't install the radi can't install the radiator guard because the radiator is hanging. So uh, the final thing we can do in this part is to install the brake lever. If you guys don't remember a couple episodes back, we tried to install a brake lever, but there's some weird fitment issues and I had to get an entirely different lever. So the brake lever that this bike is going to get is this ASV adjustable lever. So with the ZX10, the 2017s, it has to be an exact fit lever. I ordered these off of Rosella. By the way, if you want to get any of the stuff we got, this is like in this episode, I'm pretty sure everything came from Rosella. So links in the description if you want to know. But uh, this is an exact fit lever for this bike. It should work. It will be the final thing we do in this episode because we tired, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a brake lever. That's the face of a tired man. Also this one. Ladies and gentlemen, this with the brake lever on, with the tires on, with the headers and the exhaust on, we are calling this episode 18 part one done. Uh, there's nothing really else we can do right now because we're waiting on, we gotta get that torque wrench. If everything goes like I expect it to, episode two of this episode, part two of this episode will be released the same day, so you'll be able to go watch part two. Uh, we're done for this part though. Thank you all the Patreon people that were on here live. Guys, if you don't know, this is Rocket Bike Rebuild. We build this motorcycle up and we're gonna give it away. If you wanna see all the info on giving it away and stuff like that, you can check the Patreon page, links in the description if you want. Information on any of the stuff we put on the bike, links for that stuff will be in the description as well. Guys, that is Brian. My name is Chase. This has been a, look how long this is. We have been filming for seven hours. Been a long one. We will see you guys on the next episode of Rake Bike Rebuild. Thank you so much for getting to this point in the video. Good night. All right, Brian, final word for the outro crew, the guys that made it to the end of this long ass video. Thank you guys that you made it to the end of this video because I'm exhausted. I almost didn't make it. <laughs> I don't think I ever did. Thank you guys for getting to the end of the video. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.